All right, today is um, Tuesday, September 13th, and um, I'm really excited that some of you decided to join us live today because we have um, a really big thing going on in the wild tree world, and I'm excited to share it with all of you. So who else do we have on? I see Jessica, Maria, Amy, and Abby. Anyone else? Anyone on, on by phone? Okay, so before I get started, um, I just want to share that this whole concept um, is completely streamlined now, and I'm really excited to share it with you. So the big announcement is the salad in a jar party. Um, I know a lot of you are have heard about it, have come to the team meeting and seen it in action, but some of you haven't. And it is finally streamlined from the top down. Um, I worked with a group of directors over the last um, five or six days, and we've streamlined the whole process so that we can sort of hand it to you in a nice little package. So I'm really excited about that because um, it's, it was a lot of work, and we're still working on it. <laughs> so let me explain how this is going to work. So everybody, um, so my vision, I guess, when I first started doing salad parties this summer was, oh my gosh, we're missing the boat here on um, some other types of menu planning. Wild Tree is supposed to be a meal solution company, and I feel like we were so focused on dinners that why weren't we traveling down some other avenues? Maybe with the salads, maybe even with breakfast burritos at some point, um, but really giving the whole picture of how we can be a solution to everyone. I also feel like um, we're missing the boat marketing to certain groups of people while everybody eats, and that's so awesome for our businesses. Not everybody wants to do a full set of freezer meals. So um, I think you all can probably agree that there are some people who maybe aren't interested in Wild Tree, but they may be interested some, in some of our other products and other solutions we have for them. Um, so we need to get in front of more people. Um, tastings were great for that. And um, we got so bombarded by freezer meal workshops in the last four years that I think we, um, we, we all got away from tastings. Um, and tastings were great, except for when they weren't. So tastings can be very tricky to manage because you could schedule a tasting with a hostess and she could say 10 people are coming. You could get there the night of the tasting and people show up. And that's what we saw happening before freezer meal workshops happen. You know, you'd get a dud hostess and you'd show up and there would hardly be anybody there. Your sales would be low. The energy wouldn't be right in the room. So with the freezer, or sorry, with the salad in a jar party concept, we want to bring back the tasting, but we want to do it with like a guaranteed audience and guaranteed sales for you, the rep, up front. Um, that way you walk into your tasting knowing that you've got a committed group of people coming and you've got um, additional sale or you've got sales up front and you're going to collect more sales. For the salad and a jar parties, you do not have to require that everyone pre-purchase the bundle that we have set for them. Um, it's okay if, if people just want to come for the tasting. You definitely need to market this to your hostesses that this is a tasting party. So you may call it, you know, Teresa's salad in a jar tasting party or Katie's salad in a jar tasting party. So you want to make sure the word tasting is in there and that your host is very clear to say if her girlfriend's like, ah, eh, yeah, I don't really want to make salads. That she says, oh, then just come for the wine and hear about some other mealtime solutions that we're going to talk about. So you need to really market it that way. Um, and that needs to be clear to your reps and the people on your team. This is not come to a salad jar party, make your salads, and go home and go bye-bye. 
No, 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 no. That is not how these salad in a jar parties work. They, the salad in a jar part of the tasting is just going to be the fun, kind of prepping part of the party. You still need to have a demo, a checkout, and share all the other mealtime solutions that you have with everybody else. So you're gonna to wanna to share a freezer meal workshop kit. You're gonna to wanna to share the four for 40 sauce bundle, the half off specials, um, breakfast options. Really, you wanna lay out all of the options Wild Tree could be for people when you're in front of this captured audience. You also wanna share the most important thing, which is the gift of joining the Wild Tree movement um, and joining your team. So it's definitely um, a great way to get in front of a bigger audience, a new audience, and the price is right. So for those of you that don't know, the salad um, price point um, is $42.50. That's how much the bundle costs. And um, the four sauce, or sorry, the four dressings that are in the bundle are the sweet onion dressing, the gluten-free Asian ginger plum dressing, the cranberry poppy seed dressing, and the Greek vinaigrette. Those are the four dressings that have been chosen for this bundle. That comes out to $42.50 and it's gluten-free so that you can offer this to pretty much everybody. Um, there are no recipes. That's probably, well, okay, let me back it up. There are no recipes for the party. That's probably the number one question we've gotten, like, okay, so where are all the recipes for these five salads that everybody's going to make? There aren't recipes for the party. It's set up like um, a salad bar style, so everybody's going to sign up for an ingredient. Well, first of all, let me back it up a little bit. Everyone's going to have to bring their five quart size mason jars. So this is a quart size mason jar right here, just like one of these ball mason jars. Um, and everybody wants to bring a tablespoon with them. Okay? Unless you're going to provide tablespoons, that's up to you. I would say just have everybody bring their measuring spoons. Everybody brings their own salad green. Okay? Salad greens are not on the list of ingredients that they're going to share, that's their own. I might like spinach, they might like field greens, and Amy might like a spring mix. Abby might like arugula. So you bring your own greens, okay? So everybody brings this, this, and their greens. Then they sign up for a salad topping. Salad toppings might be something like edamame, broccoli, broccoli, sorry, zucchini, uh, grape tomatoes, nuts, seeds, berries, all that good stuff. So they're going to sign up for that and, um, and bring that with them. That's so easy. Um, somebody could literally stop at Kroger on their way to this event, pick up some mason jars. They're less than a dollar a piece. They're like 80 cents. And... Um, their greens and a salad topping and it would be so easy for them to show up to the party um, Everybody will assemble their salads with their dressing bundle Two tablespoons of dressing goes in the bottom of each jar and Then they start to build their ingredients from there. They need to start with um, hearty um, tough ingredients like grape tomatoes cucumber celery um, so those kinds of things that can marinate in the dressing first, and then they build from there, and you end with salad greens. Um, and that's how they, they make their five salads. A few questions that have come up are, um, how much edamame do they know to bring? Um, how much grape tomatoes do they know to bring? And that's really just going to depend on the size of the group at the final head count. So um, the nice thing is, is all of this is done on Facebook, so you can kind of see who's coming, how many people are coming, and we estimate about a quarter cup per ingredient. So if you're signed up for grape tomatoes, make sure you have about a quarter cup of grape tomato tomatoes per person. If there were five people there, you know, that would be about two and a half cups, okay? 
So basically, what I'll probably tell people is bring a big bowl full of your ingredients. It's okay if there's too much. You'd rather have too much than too little. Um, and it's not the end of the world. This has happened to us a couple times at our parties. If you run out of an ingredient, if you get to shredded carrots and you're the last person to make your last salad, if you don't have shredded carrots, no one's going to cry about it. No one's going to be like, oh, my gosh, this was horrible. I didn't get my shredded carrots in my last salad. So it's okay if you end up running out of something. But I'll tell people that are coming, you know, Bring a giant bowl full, you, it's not going to go to waste. People are going to use it or you can use, you know, bring what you like so you can use the leftovers at home. Um, there are going to be a set, we realize there needs to be a DIY version of this concept because there's going to be a lot of people that are very intrigued and they can't come to the party for some reason or they live out of town. Um, so there does need to be a DIY component to this, and that is in the process. It's being worked on today, actually, and tomorrow by Tony Diagostino. She's a guru with all of the workshops. She's created some of the best workshops that Wild Tree has. So we have her working on those. Um, what we're, what we're envisioning is giving everybody a packet of additional recipes for their four salad dressings. So that they go home and they use it to make some steak and some chicken and pork so that they actually make dinner using their bundle. And we want them to go home with five salad recipes. So if they didn't get to come, they would have a reason to build their five salads at home and with more specific recipes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Um, so this will be able to, you know, we'll be able to electronically email our DIY customers a beautiful copy of their recipes. All of the people going home from the actual event will also get emailed those exact same recipes. And so everybody um, can make those additional salads. Any questions about that? What do you got for me? Maria, I have a question about the, so does the host purchase the initial bundle and they, where do you, or do you provide the dressings? The, um, the guests pr need to pre-purchase the bundle, just like a workshop. Oh, so then they use their own dressings. Yeah. It's not like one set for everybody. Right. Oh, okay. Yep. So the cost to do your sales is $42.50 but you, it goes so much further. They're going to get that additional recipes and more salad recipes so they can pick up their leftover product. Because they will only use two tablespoons per jar. Uh -huh. so they and only have five jars. So, and five jars. So they'll have a lot of dressing left over. If someone wants to purchase less than all four dressings, can they do that or no? Um, I suppose so. I probably wouldn't like guess that a lot of people even think outside of the box to do that. Right. Okay. But, um, I suppose so. It will, they will not be able to make all of the recipes that they go home with, but okay. that's something you could probably say, you can say, sure, you don't have to buy blah, 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 but you won't have um, the ability to make all of your recipes you go home with. Okay. So, yeah. Good questions. Do you know about how many salads it would make? Let's say they wanted to make bunch for their mom and their sister or whatever how many would it make yeah if you if you look at the side of any of our salad dressing jars I think they say 10 servings I'm pretty sure I can go grab one maybe here I've got one right here okay most of it, this one is the beet citrus which is not in our bundle um, but <laughs> it is a tablespoon is a serving size, but most of ours say two tablespoons, and I think 10 to 12 servings. So if you're putting two tablespoons in each jar, I'd say you could make 10 to 12 salads for dressing. Four dressings, that would be like... Pretty good. Oh my gosh. A lot of salads. 20, 30 yeah. salads. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
What else do you guys have? Are you going to do your demo before they start like you normally would? Yes. If I'm doing the tasting. I'm just trying to figure out because I feel like I have my tasting down and I'm going to add this in. So you know, they're, they're often eager to get started. Are we just going to do the regular food tasting, have them get their food, do your demo, and then do the salad part? Yes, I would. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, because if they go ahead and make their salad, you know there's going to be some people that want to skirt out of there. Yeah. So you've got to you've got to get them in, get their wine, try some food, get into your demo, and get to the salad part. If you, that'll be the like kind of like the end, and then they can shop and check out with you. Okay. Hi. <laughs> Lily just wanted to say hi real quick. Hi, Lily. <laughs> say hi. She's your twin. So, aw. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry. So, anyways, is that, and what other questions? You've got to have more. What about inviting? Okay, so I'm going to go over how you invite for this. This is really kind of key and kind of really important. And it's something I'm going to be posting first to the LIT page before I open this up to the whole tribe. Um, mainly because obviously the group here is really working their business and you guys are going to be the first ones to jump in and venture into this. But um, the way you invite for this is through Facebook. And I know in the past we've kind of poo-pooed Facebook invites, but this is really the most efficient way to get this done because they do need to sign up for a topping and that somehow needs to get communicated to the entire group. And, you know, a mass email would kind of ugh, would be impossible to keep track of. So you really need to um, invite using Facebook, although that will be sort of the place where you house that information, but you still need to hostess coach your hostesses. You still need to um, get them to text all their friends. They still need to email all their friends. They still need to talk to their friends face to face. They still have to do all those things, but we are going to have an event page for the salad jar parties. And we've got beautiful graphics already made. You guys don't have to do, literally, I don't have to do any thinking on this. We've got it all laid out for you. Um, and you're going to post the posts um, that we've made already for you. And then that's it. Then you're going to let them respond on Facebook. Okay, Maria, I'm bringing celery, and here's my email address. That's all the information you need from them. Celery, email address. The reason you need their email address is you're then going to invoice them. So once you have her name, you plug her into the back office, get her her invoice for her bundle, she pays, and then you're ready to go. You are going to have to follow the 10-day shipping rule on this. Um, if you do not follow the 10-day shipping rule on this, you will have to expedite your order, and that will cost you $37.50. So I'm saying that right now <laughs> to cover my bases. So there is the 10-day shipping rule in place for this because this is not a bundle like a kit. Okay, so this is individual products. You are going to still want to ship to your host and I would just do the salad dressing so that she doesn't have like a crazy amount to unload, you know. I don't want her unloading skillet meals and sauce bundles and all the other stuff that's too much for your hostess. So I would still stick to just the dressings if you're shipping it to their house, okay. And that would be so easy for them to unpack, you know, because it's just dressing. So all she has to do is get this uh, tape off of them and get them lined up on her um, dining room table or something like that. Um, and um, you would have to invoice so that 10 day that 10 day shipping rule is in effect. So you need to be invoicing people the day they respond. The day you get their email address is the day they need to get the invoice because you don't want it to be day 10 days before and all of a sudden you know how it goes. You get all the last minute RSVPs and you don't want to be waiting and waiting and waiting on payments for people. So you are going to have to be very organized to do this. Um, 
but it's going to be really effective on Facebook just to get their name and what ingredient they're bringing. I think it also really brings um, kind of a community on Facebook when they see other people responding like, ooh, I'm bringing the mushrooms and the celery and oh, I'm bringing the tomatoes and the raisins. Like that's going to get people kind of excited and ready to jump in and just go for it. Um, cause that's been the, what I've, I've found from the three parties that I've had so far is people kind of like feed off of each other. Um, on that note, um, feel free to post any other extra additional posts you want. We've got, I think four or five main posts for the actual event, but you can obviously be posting every day if you want to post pictures of your salads. Um, just get everybody really excited about it. Does that make sense? So does the $42, that's before shipping? That is. It's $42.50 for the dressing. Obviously, there's shipping on that. We aren't marketing it that way. We aren't saying $42 plus shipping because after researching about 1,000 other companies' graphics, nobody ever says that. It's kind of obvious. I, mean, I think people are going to say that's a lot of money for salads, you know, I have a feeling. But again, if we break down how much it is per salad for the dressing, it is getting obviously you're probably going to add, you know, like for the freezer remote workshops, we have like $3 per serving per person. I mean, we can make up something in addition that could be a post. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe that's I think we're going to reach a bigger audience because the price point's half the cost of a workshop right I think a lot of people that were intimidated by workshops might go oh I'll try forty dollars worth of wild tree products versus eighty dollars worth of wild tree products right. so yeah it's going to be up to you to post some things about the value that they're you know what is the value in this so that is why we're coming up with those recipes and um, additional recipes as well so that they realize that they're going to be able to make this over and over and over again. And there are some people that have like moved forward and gone ahead and booked their parties and got their orders in already in just the last few days. And it's been like huge. Everybody's getting like 12 people. Really? Mm -hmm. So I think that you're going to get some pretty excited people. I love that. Yep. I feel like I'm thinking right off the bat, like to get a good, nice, healthy salad somewhere, it's going to cost eight to $10 anyway. Right. And here you're leaving with five good, healthy salads. So I feel you like you any work. You guys no. take yeah. all the work out of it. Up. Yeah. It's amazing when you realize, like, when you go into the party and there's this entire, like, salad bar for you and you just have to chop a thing and you've got these, like, amazing salads. It's a beautiful thing. Because mm -hmm. I would and never. get all the dressings. Yeah, and I would never make those kind of salads for myself because I don't have, I don't want all those toppings. I don't know. I don't have all that stuff in my house. Yeah. I want to make it with them at my parties. <laughs> Have someone make mine too. I'll pay them. <laughs> Here we yeah. Go. That's why you got to host your own. <laughs> so how many people do you think that each party needs to make it successful? I mean, as far as... I think that um, as long as you have at least five making salads, it's going to be successful. If you have only five making salads, then I would say everybody needs to bring two ingredients. Um, and that's just going to be determined later. You know, everybody's going to sign up for their topping, and then you might say, hey, we've got a great group, but we're going to need everybody to bring another topping just to make sure our salads are well-rounded and we have a variety of ingredients. People will sign up for another ingredient. It's not really that big a deal. So, so do you have any kind of master list? Do. What? We have some kind of a master list, or just people just respond back? There's all on the Facebook posts. All on the Facebook posts. Okay. We've got that all covered on beautiful graphics. Okay. And on the MRC or where where is the where's all that? 
I'm going to post it. You guys get to see it firsthand. Okay. All right, I missed that. Sorry. Yeah, that's okay. It's all on a Facebook. I'm going to share a Facebook event on the page. I just learned how to do that as well. Um, so I will share the event, and you're all going to be invited automatically. Oh, good. And then you can just get to steal all those posts and run with it. So you guys can start booking these soon. Literally, as you're making your 10 calls a day, you can just say, hey, you know, um, Susie, you, I thought of you because I knew that you um, and your husband liked the dinners, but I know your kids weren't really excited about them. Hey, we've got a really cool concept that we came out with, these um, salad in a jar parties. Do you think maybe you'd be up for having one of those? I think you're going to get a lot of people that – Maybe you weren't super impressed with Wild Tree to kind of come back and try something new. I've had um, my neighbor down the street kind of stop doing workshops, but now she's all excited to host a salad jar party. So, it'll be good. You'll, you'll, you'll capture some pretty cool people. And just make sure you're mentioning it to people when you're calling them. Like, hey, we've got this really new con cool new concept. There are mason jar salads or salad in the jar parties, however you want to tell them about it, and share it with them. You're going to be shocked by the response. People are really excited to try these. And for those of you that are local, we are going to make our next team meeting um, October 5th at 6.30 at our house, at my house. Um, is going to be another salad in a jar party. And we'll make two salads just so you all are aware of how it all works and get to go home with something fun from the party, from the, from the meeting. So why not? It was really successful this last time, so we're going to do it again. Any, any other questions? Are you guys excited to try this out and share it with your customers? I am. Good. You said it lasts for seven days. Is that what you're marketing? Pardon? It lasts for seven days, you're marketing? Yeah, okay. seven days. I've done it for seven days. Um, they are not bringing proteins. So there's no chicken going in these jars. Um, there's no avocado. I've heard chicken is fine. However, that, we're, that just gets into a whole new level of what people are bringing. We want this to be like lickety split, easiest thing ever. If people want to add proteins to their salads when they get home, um, the day they eat it, then that's great. If they have leftover chicken or taco meat in the fridge, then great, throw it on there. Um, and, and that's what I'll tell people at the tasting party. So um, they should last, they, I, I know they last seven days because I've done it and eating it on the seventh day, and it was fine. So, what other questions do you have? Can you guys hear me, or is it unstable? It keeps on telling me I'm unstable. So anyway, these are, that's, that's what, what I really wanted to share with all of you. Uh, I wanted to make sure you have the streamlined kind of 411 so that before you even roll this out, you knew what to do. There is no Google Doc for this. Um, you're literally going to be using Facebook to get make sure you get everybody signed up or, or, or texting. I mean, if the host says, hey, my girlfriend Sarah Lee just signed up. Um, just say, okay, great. I, I, I want, I need her email address and tell me what copy she's bringing so I can post that to the page. I know you can text and email from the Facebook invite. I personally have not learned that yet. I keep trying. There's just a button that says click. Have you clicked? I mean, but have you tried it? Cause I still have yet to actually text somebody from it. I didn't have anybody to text, but I'm, I'm going to try it today. I think text me. All right. I would love that. Right, maybe I missed this. How are you collecting? If you're not collecting on a Google Doc, how are you collecting their like their credit card information, everything? You're invoicing. 
So you're using the request um, payment button um, in the back office. That came out this summer. Oh, maybe we can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> it's really cool. It takes it's no time to learn. It's literally already there for you. You just haven't seen it. You know, oh, okay. Okay. So all you need is somebody's email address in order to do that. Okay. So one of our posts has that, what their steps, that they're supposed to do that. And that's pinned post so that they'll see that as soon as they get directed to that page. Okay. Any other questions? Are you going to lay out the, the Facebook posts for us? Are you going to send those? Yeah. Tonight, yeah. I'm just going to post it to the LIT page. You guys will see it all. It'll literally be a Facebook invite and you okay. can be within our group and that whole group is invited. And you guys can go ahead and grab all of that and okay. make it down. Awesome. We're kind of handing it to you on a silver platter. Yeah. Some of the images over time might change. Um, now that all the directors have their hands on it, you've got people with opinions and gurus doing this and that. But what we have is beautiful and it works well for now. Um, you just may see updates and changes. And like I said, you can't schedule one of these parties until two weeks from now anyway. And by then we will have the additional recipes for all of you to give to your customers and your DIYers. So it's okay to go ahead and start booking those now for probably end of September and beginning of October and know that you're going to get, you'll have the right information for them to take home or the DIYers. These would be really good to do for out of town guests that you can't go to their workshops. It's pretty self, like you said, a DIY. I think it'd be really good to market for your out of town friends and family. To pull yeah. Off. Yeah. Get them making some salads and posting it to Facebook. So, cool. Any other questions on this? Good. Well, does anybody else have anything to share? I didn't even give you a chance to share, like, what's been going on over the last week, um, some cool ideas or any ahas or just some um, awesome things that are going on in your businesses. Well, I have a question about the salad. Sorry. Okay. The, I called um, home office recently, and they told me the Greek vinaigrette was not gluten-free. Really? Yeah. Because we had somebody call today and they said it was. <laughs> Jessica, okay. Jessica, I would venture to say that it's not certified gluten free, but it's gluten free. They just probably don't have the marketing on it that says that it's certified gluten free, which would be important for people that have celiac disease. But I know it doesn't have wheat in it. Yeah, because it's in the Simply Wholesome. So I was specifically asking about that. And um, and I said, well, what about the Greek vinaigrette? And they said, it's not gluten-free. But you can't tell me it's gluten-free if it's not certified, I guess. That would be what I would think maybe they meant by that. Yeah. I think so, too, because there's not any wheat in it at all. And certified is just an extra step of safety for people that have celiac disease versus people that just don't eat gluten or are sensitive to it. There's a, there's just for people that have celiac disease, something saying it's certified gluten free means it's super safe for people with celiac disease. So, right. I'll, I'll try and get more to the bottom of that um, for you, but I think it, and we were safe to say that the bundle is gluten free is the whole bundle certified gluten free. Obviously it's not, but so I wouldn't sell it to a truly celiac person, but I'm guessing like somebody like Amy, would you feed that to your daughter like or not? Um, I would, but she wouldn't eat it. <laughs> okay. But, but I do if feed her like, things. If you wanted to try it, would she eat it? Yes, I would give it to her. And I, I certainly give her things from Wild Tree that don't say certified gluten-free on them, but are gluten-free. Right. And I no issues. So, yeah. Um, and then, um, what else was I going to say? Shoot about that. I forget. 
Go ahead, guys. Anything else? Because we have three minutes left. I know I talked about it last time, the tastings, but if your calendar is low, just reach out to past customers, family members, anybody's really willing to have a tasting. And they have been more successful than all my workshops lately. One after the next, after the next. They're, they're seven, eight hundred dollars, which are my workshops are not. So just, just putting that out there again. Reach out to those people that maybe didn't like the workshops and get a tasting. My mom had an eight hundred dollar tasting last week. So it's crazy. Just put it out there. Yeah. For sure. And it's kind of hard to change it up. I do like one week of tasting, one week of workshop. I like it. Yeah. It does. It keeps your business on its toes and fresh. And I just want you all to be excited to offer something new to your customers that's still really hands-on and fun and a fresh new take on what we have to offer. We're really trying as a director group to really kind of hone in on, okay, what other mealtime solutions can we offer our customers? Maybe it's not a burrito making party, but it's a burrito making kit that is like, boom, here are the recipes. To get those going. So, a lot of fun stuff like that is coming down the pipeline so that you have plenty of options to offer everybody, and it's not just freezer meal workshops. Is that, is that exciting, all of you? Mm hmm. Good. Yeah. Okay. Hey, can I ask something really quickly? Real quick. Mm -hmm. Real quick. Um, so, for this Big work. I've got a 15 person workshop coming up. Maria gave me some suggestions on checkout as far as maybe starting after meal four or five. Have any of you ever had big workshops like this? Like, do you, anybody else have any other good suggestions? To Abby's had some big workshops. I've had some 18s and they're, and they're definitely challenging. You have to be on there. I mean, you're going to have the lot. I think it's better when my host did not make her meals. I have one okay. that hosted and one did not. I mean, even offer to maybe go to her house and make with her another time because then you can have her to help you to manning that many tables, that many areas. It's really helpful to have an extra set of hands or bring a, someone you could bring with you because just logistically, I didn't really feel like I got to meet them all and get to know them and build relationships. Didn't even know all their names by the time they came to check out. Okay. So if you can do that at all, have a, have a name plate at every spot. So as you walk around, you'll try to remember. You know what? Name. I would bring name tags, you know, just like oh, okay. labels, yep. and have them all put a name tag on. And then as you're walking around helping people out, you're going to see their name the whole night and remember who they are. Great. Okay. You definitely don't have your host make her meals. That's okay. what you don't. Just talk to her privately about that. Okay. <laughs> if she's got the kits sometime soon, have her do them now. Okay. <laughs> I think what else? Maybe you have them write their wish list while you're doing your demo. It's uh -huh. quicker at checkout anyway. And uh -huh. been, I I have a little clipboards, but you could do the I do the wish list and then their customer care form behind it. I have them fill that out in the beginning, and uh -huh. so they can go back.